Yeah, Stephen, I think, I think the Rand's weakness is following through from last week's uh, you know, shenanigans, the, the rumours of a fixed uh, currency, uh, subsequent denials, but certainly uh, you know, a lot of nervousness around the cabinet shifts. And as we approach tomorrow's medium-term budget, I guess the market is still remaining unsure as to, as to where the government is heading as far as policy is concerned. And uh, that's creating the uncertainty and hence the weakness feeding through into the Rand. I mean, do you think there could be any announcements on policy in the mini budget tomorrow? Or do you think it's really going to focus on those those deficit numbers that we're expecting? Well, I, I, I don't think it would be the appropriate forum to to announce any shift in economic policy. Although the president, Mr. Zuma, has an, uh, you know has stated that he will that he'll make some announcements in the coming days. I think the medium-term budget uh, framework will focus on on, on on the budget deficit, how the government uh, aims to raise that money. But certainly, you know, things on the domestic front are not looking rosy at all, as the economy is still battling to 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 gain any traction, uh, and uh, you know, government spending is is taking up the slack, and of course, that's adding to the budget deficit. Of course, we've had the Deputy President, Halema Motlanti, suggesting that deficit could be as high as 8% of GDP. What sort of number are you looking for at Net Bank Capital? Yeah, I think any, anywhere between 7 or 8% is expected in the market. And, you know, that's, that's not sort of, uh, uh, although in a traditional world that, that those would be considered uh, pretty, pretty hefty levels. Uh, I, the whole world is struggling with these kind of numbers as government tries to stimulate the global economy, uh, you know, and, and, and government spending has to take up the slack of the, of, of, of the private economy really dropping off. So uh, in the global context, it's not unusual, but certainly given what's happened over the last few decades in South Africa, as we've managed that budget deficit right down, in fact, into, into primary budget surpluses in the past, uh, the bond market won't take too kindly to those numbers. And obviously, uh, foreign investors will be looking very carefully at that. Well, given the expectations for that budget deficit and the fact that the government has flagged what it could be, do you think it's likely to be RAND sensitive? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, the budget deficit will, will, will highlight the economic problems that we're facing. And, uh, but nothing, of, uh, nothing will come as a surprise. I mean, everybody's well aware of these numbers, the budget deficit and the employment numbers and the growth numbers and the manufacturing sector problems that we're facing. And, 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 and the, the, you know, it, it, it's just in the past few months we've been managing to focus on international factors. And I think domestic factors are now coming into the spotlight. Those are far from positive. And, and, and you know, this is the kind of reaction we're seeing in the RAND at the moment. Of course, we chatted last Thursday, David, about that article that suggested the RAND could be frozen at weaker levels than it's at at the moment. Do you think that's died away for the moment, or do you think it's something that is going to be debated going forward? Well, I certainly think the initial impact has died away as the government denied it. But there's no doubt that the, that the uh, you know, prevailing view from the authorities is the RAND is far too strong. Uh, and I guess they're just joining the long list of, 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 of uh, financial authorities across the globe that are complaining about strong currencies against the dollar. Uh, you know, that, that, that will remain in investors' in, in investors' mind, coupled with what's happening, uh, you know, on, on, on a sort of political uh, front as, as far as economic shift is, is, is uh, likely to be, then, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to see how the RAND's going to gain much momentum going forward. Of course, there have been some suggestions that South Africa could follow Brazil's example and tax portfolio inflows. I think Brazil's um, taxing them by 2%. Do you think that would be a more workable solution for South Africa? Yeah, Stephen, I, you know, I think certainly the debate is open in terms of how one manages one currency. And, and, and you know, this morning we had the, the New Zealand authorities talking about a New Zealand dollar that was far too strong for their liking. So I certainly think there's going to be a huge amount of debate around this issue. One has to be careful, of course, that you, that you don't uh, you know, implement knee-jerk reactions that have long, create longer-term problems. So I, I, you know, I don't have a view as to how one manages this. Uh, there's the traditional way of, of, of intervention, and, and you know that's a costly exercise. Uh, you can try and talk your currency weaker, but really it's a product of, of the global system at the moment. And uh, I, I'm not sure what the right answer is myself. Certainly, uh, there's going to be a huge amount of debate on this front going forward. Well, looking past the mini budget tomorrow, we have inflation data coming out on Wednesday and Thursday. We also have that private sector credit extension figure coming out on Thursday. Are you looking for any improvements on, on, on those figures from last month? Yeah, I think, I, you know, the, the inflation is moving in the right direction. We're still above that 3 to 6% band. But even that's up for debate whether inflation targeting is going to be a policy going forward. So all of this uncertainty is creating a lot of nervousness in the market. And hence, uh, you know, you, you're seeing the kind of market reactions that we're seeing. Uh, just because there's such a, such a huge amount of uncertainty going forward, the market really looking for some direction. And until we find that, we'll, we'll, you know, the, the market will continue with the sort of uh, reactions that we've seen over the last few sessions. 
Of course, David, globally we had um, some more positive earnings surprises out of the US on Friday. We also had some whole home sales data, that sales of existing homes. They reached their best in two years, and of course they have been helped by that government program. And so, so some positive noise coming out of the United States. What are you looking for this week from the US? Stephen, I, I think uh, you know the, the only time we can say for, for certain that, that the global problems are finished is when we actually see some uh, some some jobs growth around the world. That's that will be key for me. I you know I'll be looking at numbers like like the unemployment figures in the U.S. and and non-farm payrolls and, and similar numbers across the world. That that will really confirm for me that we that we're heading in the right direction. Until we see that happening, uh, you know it's 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 very premature to talk about a, a business as usual kind of mode and risks still abound as long as we, we you know as long as people can't can't find jobs and we're not creating jobs the consumer will be constrained and that will have all sorts of implications for for asset price growth uh, so for me the, the the key numbers are going to be employment numbers across the world as they come out of course we do have US GDP figures coming out later this this week and um, for the third quarter and the market's looking for a number north of three percent growth for the third quarter now sure if we get a growth figure of that magnitude it would suggest that some job creation could be in the in the pipeline yeah i think the danger Stephen, that there's a lot of good news priced in you know earnings reports have come out and the big debate now around the earnings is is, is are those on, on on efficiencies or is it as a result of of actual sales growth um, and uh, you know gdp could you could face a similar kind of situation where there's a, a lot of positive energy in the markets but without the jobs growth coming through those numbers are going to be fleeting and temporary at best and and you know we we really need to see some employment data some positive employ employment data coming through your, your, your thoughts for the RAND as the week progresses? I think the RAND will remain on the back foot, uh, you know, until we get some, some, some direction as far as policy is concerned. So on a trade-weighted basis, I, I really don't see the RAND benefiting much. Uh, the, 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 the global play at the moment, obviously, is to be short of dollars. That, for me, is creating also a little bit of concern because of the, I think the whole world is, is, is positioned in the same direction. Uh, I think there are a number of risks at the moment, Stephen. You know, gold is battling to find higher levels. Equity markets, the Dow pivoting around this 10,000 level. The euro above 150, but nervously so. I think we, we, you know, it's a very cautious market at this point in time, and markets will be looking for direction out of, out of economic data in this coming week.